Our San Antonio Spurs still looking for their first win in the NBA Summer League play last night against the Houston Rockets. San Antonio just signed forward Dominic Barlow to a two-way contract, and he shows why in first quarter corralling a bounce pass, again, to get to fall count it and one. After that three-point play, Spurs lead after one. Second quarter, Spurs ramp up their D. Blake Wesley with the steal and slam. Then Robert Woodard does the exact same thing. Back-to-back -back dunks. Spurs in control at halftime, up 54-46. Malachi Branham starts the third quarter strong, nailing a catch and shooting a three for a six-point lead, but San Antonio trails after three. Then in the fourth, Branham strikes again with an elbow jumper. Branham has his best showing of summer league play with a team high 20 points. However, the Rockets pull away in the fourth quarter, outscoring the Spurs 51-30 in the second half. Houston goes on to win it 97-84. The Spurs fall to 0-3 in summer league play. Forever, we only had a couple practice practices in summer league and coming out on the court, you know, it's kind of tough. Um, you know, we don't know how each other plays. Um, we don't have team chemistry, but, you know, it's, it's all about getting reps in. Up next, the Spurs take on the Atlanta Hawks. Thursday, that game is set for 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Spurs unveiled their M Nike NBA Classic uniforms for their 50th anniversary this coming season. If it looks familiar, it should, because the man making the reveal wore it proudly when he suited up for the silver and black. That's the Iceman George Gervin. The Hall of Famer showing off the classic black with San Antonio across the top. It's a way to honor the legacy of all players who have been under the Spurs umbrella over the decades. These uniforms will be worn by the Spurs at select games on the road and even at home this coming season. That's cool. He got to show it off. I know. Good to see ice again. Very good. Time now, 442 and 82 degrees for now. It's Amazon Prime Day, and we are taking a look at the big deals that are, they are offering right now, along with other retailers. Plus, first look at how you can get some great deals on summer cruises right now. Welcome back. It's about 445. While the cost of most summer travel remains high, many cruise lines are offering bargains. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, bargain on the high seas. Travelers are cruising into big savings, finding major deals as prices soar for trips by air and even car. I'm calling this a bit of a golden hour when it comes to cruising because I truly don't expect this pricing to last. If you are looking for a deal, this is the time to book your deal. When the prices dropped so dramatically low, uh, it was just, it was incredible. Ed O'Donnell typically stays in hotels, but this year he chose to do a cruise instead for five nights, spending less than a hundred bucks a day. I spent literally less than $500. I, I think if you include parking. And we'll have much more on how to stretch your summer vacation budget coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Well, you can pretty much call it Black Friday in July. Amazon's Prime Day is officially underway, and it's offering discounts on all kinds of things. And it's not just Amazon. Other retailers are getting in on the fun. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Morris has some strategies to help you shop smart. The countdown is on to Amazon's Shopaganza. Two days of discounts and lightning deals. Hello, Alexa. Prime Day is known for its tech deals, especially when it comes to Amazon's own proprietary tech. Echo speakers, fired tablets, look for 50 to 60% off. But Retail Me Not's Kristen McGrath says necessities will be big too because, well, inflation, which also means tighter budgets. Last year, the average budget heading into Prime Day was just under $600. This year, it's just under $400. So how do you score real deals and avoid getting sucked into the hype? McGrath says first, make a list. Add those items to your wish list or your cart in advance so that you know exactly what you're looking for. You need to look at the price tag and not just the percentage off discount. I would look at the price history of the item. There are tools you can use to track that. Tools like Camel, Camel, Camel can help you see the item's price over time. And of course, shop around. Several retailers, including Target, Walmart, Best Buy, and Kohl's are in hot competition with their own summer sales. If you see a price you like on something you need, McGrath says jump on it. But back to school sales will get better later 
and TVs and gaming consoles, she says you may want to wait for the real Black Friday. You do need to be a Prime member to take advantage of Prime Day. You can sign up for a free trial. Just remember to cancel or you will be charged the annual fee, which right now is $139. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Okay, we have some more information on that accident. This is far east side. So far east, it's almost Ackerman right now. We've got an accident that has shut down uh, part of northbound 410 exits ramp to eastbound I-10. You see some debris or some railing there in the roadway. First responders remain on the scene. The good news is traffic is fairly light, but that ramp remains closed and will be for the foreseeable future. We will get some more information from Stephen Cavazos coming up at the top of the hour. Yes, we look forward to that. Also looking forward to maybe some relief out there, although I don't think we're going to see it today. I can't. I, yesterday I was outside in the afternoon, didn't want to be, but I had to run some errands and uh, I can't remember the last time it was that hot around here, Mike. Yeah. It has been years since we've seen. It was 107 officially, and then you had to factor in some of the, the heat index, and mm -hmm. that was just here in town. But yeah, it, it was. Just, it's overwhelmingly hot when you uh, you know walk across the just stepping outside. Period. But you know walking across the parking lot of the grocery store, something like that, and a few wispy clouds in some places. Yeah, it looks like fingers across the sky, and too bad those. Fingers don't tickle the clouds enough to give us more rain, but at least we did have a couple of them out there. And right now, as you can see, we do have uh, just a couple of clouds and also one or two of these uh, stray showers. Just a couple of them out here. These have been sort of holding together a little bit in the overnight hours coming in here, obviously from the northeast. And there were a few a uh, few more lightning strikes earlier this morning. Those little uh, white little lines that kind of pop up there and a decent downpour um, sliding down to the southwest. They may hold together for the next couple of hours, but I really wouldn't count on a whole heck of a lot uh, from that. It's just kind of a, a little nice little morning surprise, if you will, for some folks. 86 right now is the heat index here in town. 88 in Hondo, 86 down the road in Stinson. And actually the humidity is up one, two, three degrees compared to this time yesterday, which doesn't seem like a lot. But, you know, when we've got temperatures so high and so much humidity, adding just that little bit to it adds sort of insult to injury. We are going to be staying in the low 80s this morning, bottoming out right around 80 degrees and then warming up quickly. Already by 10 o'clock, we're going to be up to 90 and already up to pretty much the normal high temperature before we even hit noon and then we're going to be in the upper 90s at noon 100 starting off early off in the afternoon early on in the afternoon I should say and then going for 104 for a high temperature today 10% chance for one of those stray showers or two like we've had yesterday like we had the day before it's going to be kind of like looking at you know you get the weather app and you look at the radar and go please hold together and come down here but um, you're going to have to beg and plead I think to get some of this rain some folks will get it but most of us unfortunately will not humidity is high this morning it will drop down but we'll still have enough of it out there even though we're going to be right around 60 degrees or so still enough humidity out there to give us those heat index readings up around 108 here in town 112 in Catula 109 Eagle Pass as well as around Beeville 111 in Victoria New Braunfels you're looking at a heat index today of 110. That's what it actually feels like to your body, how inefficiently your body can cool itself. So you just have to take it easy. And again, all these numbers are in the shade. You get in the direct sun, it's even worse out there. Here's those couple leftover showers that the uh, computer model is showing up this morning. And again, I, I think this kind of even overdoes it this morning with one or two of those little leftover showers. It looks like that thing's sort of fizzling on out. But then by later on this afternoon, a couple of them do continue to uh, pop up around here through dinner time in the early evening. Then those are going to start to sort of uh, fizzle on out. Tomorrow it does look like we will do it all over again in the afternoon. At least one or two of those showers out there, but it's not going to be a whole heck of a lot. Tomorrow's still going to be really, really hot. Then at least we're going to be shaving a couple of degrees off temperatures. So instead of 104, 103, it'll be upper 90s or even 100 as we head in toward the end of the week. So doesn't sound like a lot, but we'll take anything at this point. 98 at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then a high temperature today up to 104. That will be a record. Heat index is going to, that's here in town, about 108. One or two of those stray showers out there. Of course, we do have the heat warnings, excessive heat warnings and advisories in effect up until 7 o'clock tonight. They've been in effect for about the past 48 hours. And the heat, uh, excessive heat warning is the I-35 corridor as well as the uh, metropolitan area. Tomorrow, 103. Wow. Cold snap, 99. 
Thursday, Friday. I don't mean to be flip about it, but again, we'll take anything. Four degrees is going to be a, a godsend, I think. And then right around triple digits, though, for the weekend. At least the next couple of days, one or two of those showers in the afternoon. The other thing I was reminded of this week is our air conditioners can only keep up. Yeah. At one point, there's a tipping point, and, yes. and the temperature of the house will rise above what the AC can yeah. keep cool. Mm -hmm. It's been happening a lot for us. And I thought last month's like bill was high. Stunk. Mm. Yeah, this one's really oh. going to stink. Yes. 453, about 82 degrees. And coming up next, a first look at a new Kung Fu Panda series. Plus, Christian Bale talks about his superhero movie roles. Christian Bale talks Thor and Batman, plus a new Kung Fu Panda series is arriving on Netflix. Related to what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Chuck Sieberston. Christian Bale is one of the few actors to appear in both DC and Marvel Cinematic Universe films. The one-time Batman star is now featured as the villain Gore in Marvel's Thor Love and Thunder. Robert Pattinson most recently played the role of the Cape Crusader in The Batman. Bale says he hasn't seen it, no. but that's not a slight on Pattinson. Bale says he hardly watches any movies. In a recent interview, the Welsh actor says if his children want to watch The Batman, he will get around to seeing it. Pandas may be cute, but in China, as a national symbol, they are taken seriously. Actor James Hong, who played Mr. Peng in Kung Fu Panda, says the Chinese government was wary when the movie first came out in 2008, worried about the animal being shown as funny. But Hong says audiences in China loved seeing the fun side of the panda. It opened up a whole new world of theatrics for, for China and uh, the people around the world. Uh, and I'm wow. very glad to be part of all that. James Hong stars with Jack Black in Kung Fu Panda, The Dragon Knight, a new series streaming on Netflix later this week. Monty Norman, who wrote one of the world's most famous pieces of music, the theme tune for the James Bond films has died. He was 94. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. Chuck Sievertson, ABC and, uh, News. I'd rather leave it at that. 457, 82 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the House Committee investigating the January 6th Capitol attack is meeting this afternoon. We're going to have a first look at what testimony the committee will hear today. Plus the latest on the investigation into a fire at a CPS Energy substation that resulted in no power for hundreds of customers yesterday. And another look at the accident there off of uh, Loop 410 northbound. That exit to I-10 eastbound uh, looks like it's still holding up people in that area. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos after the break. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The January 6th committee expected to hold its seventh public hearing today. I'm Jay O'Brien in Washington. What they're planning to unveil coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are starting off warm again and just hoping for just a little bit of relief, maybe sometime this week. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, July 12th. Yes, just trying to catch our breath a little bit this morning with temperatures dropping down now down to 82 degrees. I know uh, it's hard to believe because even this early in the morning, um, it's not that comfortable outside. I mean, I guess it's better than triple digits, though, Mike. And then look at it this way. Hey, we won't be 107 today. Sure. So we'll we'll say the good news first. We're still going to be well up into the hundreds today, and I, I don't mean to make light of it, of course, because it is going to be dangerously hot out there. 83 degrees right now. The dew point, that bottom number there is at 69. So plenty of humidity, and that means we have a heat index to deal with as of right now. We are going to be up to 104 today. That's going to uh, hit a new record. Yesterday, of course, we hit a record high temperature, like I said, of 107. The aquifer uh, went down half a foot, and of course, check with you your local uh, water district, your local municipality, as far as what the watering restrictions are in place where you live, and mold is at least on the low side. We've got a lot of clear skies right now, maybe one or two clouds out there, and there are one or two just uh, stray showers, a couple of uh, thunderstorms earlier, and this is... Uh, well, it, it's nice to see this is kind of holding together. It looked like it was wanting to die down in this cell right there just to the northwest of Cuero had sort of 
eased up a little bit and still had some decent rain here in this northern cell and now a couple of lightning strikes are being detected right there. So this is going to continue to work its way down to the uh, southwest. So folks around Nixon, you may get grazed by this and that will work down to the south. A couple of more uh, even further to the north right there. And again, everything is sliding down to the uh, southwest. Uh, few and far between. This is going to be like the situation then later on this afternoon where there's going to be one or two of them like we had yesterday, the day before that. And most of us though are just going to be begging and pleading to see some of this rain back to uh, the heat and humidity. It feels like 86 in town right now. At least the heat index has come down somewhat in Hondo. It's only at 86, 87 is what it feels like right now. Canyon Lake, as well as at Stinson, warm and humid, of course, and then blisteringly hot again. One or two stray showers later on today, tomorrow, blazing hot again. We'll still be well 104 today going for 103 tomorrow, a stray shower or two down just a couple of degrees once we get into Friday, Thursday, Friday, as well as the weekend. Still right around 100, but we'll take a couple of degrees. As far as the heat and warnings and advisories, excessive heat warning in effect, the I-35 corridor heading out 10, all of the metropolitan area. This is in effect till 7 o'clock tonight, and the heat advisories for the entire area. Take it easy. Lots and lots of water when you head outside. Details in the forecast going into the weekend coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Morning, sir. Got some problems out there, right? Yeah, early in the morning, Mike, and welcome back. Uh, let's get a look here. I know we can't really see it from this shot, but I-10 East at Loop 410. Uh, very dark outside, but I'm going to step out and give you a closer look. What we are seeing is a crash that was reported a little bit earlier this morning, and Mark actually noticed that there's some debris out on the roadway. Talked to our friends at Trans got a little bit earlier. They're telling us that's part of a guardrail, unfortunately, and you can see that it is uh, right there at the exit ramp to I-10 East. This is coming off Loop 410 in the northbound lanes, but not really impacting traffic just yet. We're seeing first responders out there working to clear this mess up. No word yet on any injuries, but as always, we hope everybody's okay, but right now, thankfully, traffic is looking okay as well. Let's go ahead and get a look at the map right now. We'll show you that is in the northbound lanes of 410 again, that exit to I-10 and East seeing a little bit of a buildup right now, but nothing too dramatic uh, that's going to cause such an issue for your early morning commute. Now let's go ahead and just show you a wide look at the map. Thankfully, nothing else to talk about. We do see a lot of active construction spots. Just notice if you check the top of your screen, another crash icon popped up near Stone Oak on 281. We'll find out what's going on there and give you those uh, in for that information as the morning does progress. But for now, travel's taking you right here to the Alamo City. We have those travel times for you. The journey from Bernie is a 24 minute drive time on the eastbound lanes of I-10. 27 minutes coming in from 281 in Bolverde. No need to hurry there and not too awful coming in from New Braunfels on I-35 southbound heading in. So right now things are looking good there. Can't say the same back here off I-10 East at Loop 410. We'll watch it closely and have more updates in the next few minutes. Mark Stuff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a woman is behind bars after a police report says she threatened to shoot up a school in Live Oak earlier this summer. Sarah Costa is live downtown with those details. And Sarah, do we know how she made that threat? Yeah, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. This all stemmed from a phone call that she made to the principal of Live Oak Learning Center on his cell phone. This happened on June 8th. She was arrested a couple of days later. Let's just take a look at her mugshot. This is 29 year old Ariana Brown. Police say, excuse me, 28 year old Ariana Brown. Police say the evening of June 8th, the principal of Live Oak Learning Center received a phone call from a blocked number. He told police a woman's voice told him she and others were going to the school the next day to beat someone up. The police affidavit says she allegedly said if that person was not at the school that they would shoot the school up. The principal called police the next day. There was a police pre presence at the school. All school officials and parents were also notified of the threat. Live Oak police investigating the case were able to work with cell phone carrier companies to track down the blocked number and linked it to Brown and found her address. Brown agreed to speak with police but told them she stumbled on a message exchange about a potential threat and that she just wanted to warn the school. However, after police finished their investigation, it was determined that she did make that call and did make that threat. She was arrested earlier this summer, and now she is facing felony charges of a terroristic threat. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie.
Thank you, Sarah. This morning, CPS Energy Crew is trying to figure out what caused a fire that left thousands of residents without power during one of the hottest parts of the day Monday. The fire happened around 6 last night and was at a substation off West Pyra near Hancock. The fire was contained to the substation. However, about 3,500 customers were without power for a little while. In a tweet, CPS Energy said the customers were taken offline for safety. It says the cause of the fire is still not yet known. Customers we spoke with said the shutoff impacted businesses and classes, but it was also a reminder to be on alert. Very it's hot. miserable and I'm from Arizona, so this is still miserable for me. We'll find someone who has electricity still and go see them. So That's a good idea. I don't know. Other than that, what more can you do? Drive around in your car, I guess. <laughs> That's all you can do. The outage came just hours after a text alert was sent asking CPS Energy customers to conserve energy. Another day has passed and no video has been released from inside of Robb Elementary the day of the shooting. The Texas House panel investigating the shooting wanted to release the video. Its chair, State Representative Dustin Burroughs, shared a letter from Texas DPS last week. It says the Uvalde DA instructed DPS not to release it. Burroughs tweeted Monday, it's his intention to share the video with the people of Uvalde, and he will not release it to the public until that happens. Meanwhile, the Texas House panel investigating the shooting says its investigation should be wrapped up in a few days. In Washington this morning, the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol is gearing up for its seventh hearing. ABC's Jay O'Brien has the latest from Washington. This morning, the January 6th committee preparing for its seventh hearing, zeroing in on the Capitol attack itself. USA! The committee trying to make the case former President Donald Trump's own words inspired his supporters to breach the Capitol, trying to stop certification of the 2020 election. President Trump summoned the mob, assembled the mob, and lit the flame of this attack. The hearing expected to focus on radical extremists who took part in the assault. A former spokesperson for the militia group, the Oath Keepers, planning to testify as members of that group face seditious conspiracy charges tied to the riot. Lawmakers also expected to call Stephen Ayers, an Ohio man who pled guilty to his role in the Capitol attack. The FBI says Ayers posted on social media accusing President Biden and Democrats of treason and warning of a coming civil war. Today's testimony coming after an about face from Steve Bannon, the conservative firebrand and one time Trump strategist who now says he'll speak to the committee on the eve of his criminal trial for ignoring a congressional subpoena. Bannon previously refused to cooperate, citing executive privilege despite leaving his Trump White House job in 2017. From the start, he said he's willing to comply if they just resolve the privilege issue, which he feels he's bound by. A judge yesterday disagreed, saying the presidential power to withhold information doesn't cover a former government official who worked for a now former president. Federal prosecutors writing, quote, the only thing that has really changed is that Bannon is finally about to face the consequences of his decision. The January 6th committee spent eight hours Friday interviewing former Trump White House counsel Pat Cipollone. Members say his testimony could be played in today's hearing or the following hearing, which aides say the committee is planning to hold next week. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. Now 510, 82 degrees. And still ahead, details on a new feature from Twitter that lets you remove yourself from a conversation. Outside with live cam and uh, unbelievably hot day yesterday here in South Texas. I mean, just unbelievable temperatures. We saw a few more showers and storms pop up, but Mike has been tracking a little bit of activity this morning. He has an update on some heat warnings and advisories coming up. Of course, it's super hot outside and a local man we talked to said he's been living on the streets of San Antonio for the last seven months. He said if it wasn't for places like Corazon Ministries and Haven for Hope, he does not know how he would survive this heat. Both organizations say despite the extremely hot days, they have not seen an uptick in people looking for help. They believe it is because most of the homeless population in town might be used to the heat and that they would rather just tough it out. Whether it's extreme cold or extreme heat, is that people are passing away on the street. During the snowstorm, obviously, we lost a handful mm -hmm. to, to the weather, um, but I don't know how many we've lost recently to the extreme heat. Corazon and Haven for Hope say they will still try to provide people with water and cooling towels, even if they reject their other services. 
515, 82 degrees. And coming up next, a first look at a new TikTok training feature that can help small and medium-sized businesses. It only takes a second for an everyday item to become dangerous. Tide Pods Child Guard Pack helps keep your laundry packs in a safe place and your child safer. To close, twist until it clicks. Tide Pods Child Guard Packaging. These used cars look the same, but Carfax can show how damage history affects the value. <sighs> your damage has always been visible. <laughs> We're twins. Stop overpaying. Shop at the all-new Carfax.com. Identical twins. I get bladder leaks. I didn't want to feel like I was wearing the pads I wore when I was 12. Then I tried the always discreet pads. They fit perfectly in the place they're supposed to. Look how much it holds. And it still stays thin. It's the protection we deserve. Fur, you won't phase me. Unlike Zyrtec, Allegra won't make me drowsy. Allegra starts working two times faster than Claritin. So take Allegra before allergy symptoms take over you. And for kids, try allergist recommended non-drowsy children's Allegra. In today's Tech Bytes, Twitter is expanding a feature to easily remove yourself from a conversation. The feature called Unmentioning will untag your username from a conversation that you no longer want to engage in. Twitter has tested Unmentioning with limited users. It's now available to all users. TikTok is offering a new training program to help small businesses use the platform. The six-week program includes a guide on how to advertise on TikTok. A recent poll found nearly 60% of owners felt the site helped their businesses. And WhatsApp is expanding its emoji availability by a lot. Users will no longer be limited to the app's six emojis. Within a few weeks, 3,500 will be available. Tapping the plus icon opens a menu containing every available emoji. Well, I'm going to give that one a thumbs up. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. All right, let's get a look around town. We are seeing a lot of flashing lights out there and some areas where we're seeing those flashing lights are actually construction spots, so be on the lookout. But I do want to mention that some of the issues that we're seeing here along I-10 East at Loop 410 haven't really improved. Unfortunately, we're seeing some of those flashing lights due to a crash. Now, let's go ahead and just take you straight to the map there because that's actually being pinpointed right there along Loop 410 northbound at I-10, the exit to I-10 East. Now, no buildup just yet, just a little bit of red there, so just make sure Sure you watch out if you are trying to get onto I-10 East. You may encounter some first responders working to pick up the remains of a crash. Again, no word yet on any injuries, but we hope everybody's okay. But right now, thankfully, traffic is looking just fine. Now let's go ahead and give you a wide look at the map here at 520. Just a lot of those active construction spots that you see along the map. One of the areas we want to remind you of is, is for our friends out in Guadalupe County. There's actually going to be guardrail repairs that we're going to see continuing to take place at least up until Thursday. This is going to be up until Thursday, July 14th, 7 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. So those crews, we know that they're going to get out there a little bit earlier. So make sure that you get out there or make sure you prepare and look for a different route if this is going to take you through there. Single lane closures in both directions from State Highway 46 to FM 477. But of course, if you grab those phones and open your camera app, scan this QR code, that'll take you directly there. That has a list of all the closures taking place in and around our area. But Mike Osterhage, we know those crews are going to be battling some significant heat. I was thinking about that yesterday when I drove past a construction site. Man, bless the folks that have to work outside in this kind of stuff. All right, the moon waxing gibbous. It is going to be full tomorrow. Just set just a, a few minutes ago. It's absolutely gorgeous out there, so hopefully you can catch it tomorrow. And then, of course, right as the sun is going down, it is going to be rising in the east. And as you can see, we don't really have much in the way of any clouds out there over there at uh, 410, looking off to the east by the airport. Of course, yesterday, 107 was a record high for for the day. It also tied the hottest July temperature ever and fifth hottest temperature ever tied for that. We are not going to be hitting 107 today, but it's still going to be just blisteringly hot. All right, we had a couple of leftover showers and a couple of or showers and thunderstorms that popped up yesterday afternoon, and now we do have a couple of leftovers right now off to the east, and these have been holding together fairly well. It looked like they were starting to, to fizzle on out there, and they are continuing to work their way down to the uh, southeast at just about 10, 15 miles per hour, so a few decent downpours, and if they do indeed hold together, they will be uh, making it right down 
to the uh, southeast there again, about to say 15 miles per hour and uh, right around Yoakum at 530 this morning. So at least you are getting a couple of showers out there. These are going to be fizzling on out and then we will see more developing later on this afternoon. 86 is what it feels like in town right now. 87 Stinson as well as Canyon Lake and uh, boy, just another. I mean, once that sun starts to come up, you're just going to watch the thermometer go up. It is all already going to be just almost unbearably hot by about about noon 98 degrees. This doesn't even take into account some of the humidity. So we are going to be up to 104 add four or five degrees to that and that's what it's going to feel like later on today 108 for a heat index uh, 112 Catula 111 in Victoria you just got to really take it easy at least there are going to be a couple of the showers couple of the thunderstorms trying to pop up later on this afternoon just a few of them here and there it's just that you know you're going to be just begging and pleading for it to come into your backyard if indeed they do you know pop up nearby but they're going to just pop up and then sort of fizzle on out fairly quickly. 98 degrees today, partly cloudy skies again at noon and then 104, one or two of those stray showers. Heat index is going to be right around 108. Excessive heat warnings in effect. The purple shade for the uh, I-35 corridor and Metropolitan San Antonio. And then the heat advisories elsewhere up until 7 o'clock tonight. 104 today, 103 tomorrow. At least temperatures are shaved off a few degrees by the end of the week. And the weekend still around triple digits, but just maybe not as ridiculously miserably hot. But okay. it's going to be a doozy today. As we always say, every little bit helps. Yep. Yes, so Thursday and Friday look good. Thank you. Way. Thank you, Mike. 523, 82 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, a first look at a new action flick called Day Shift. Plus, Leah Michelle replaces Vini Fieldstein on Broadway. 526, Jamie Foxx fights bloodsuckers in his new film, and a Broadway star gets a replacement. Here's CNN's Rick Damagella with the Hollywood Minute. Like every day. What are you doing in my room? Hunting vampires. Jamie Foxx's new line of work. The actor joins forces with Snoop Dogg and Dave Franco to take on the undead in Day Shift. This is your first look at the action-packed flick, which lands on Netflix August 12th. Leah Michelle's Broadway switch. The former Glee star is taking over for Beanie Feldstein as Fanny Bryce in the Broadway revival of Funny Girl. Feldstein announced her departure on Instagram, citing a change in direction for her sooner than anticipated exit. Michelle will take the stage in September. We have a real opportunity here. You know what else? Feel like there's still a couple of loose ends. Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez will get a chance to tie up those loose ends with more only murders in the building. Hulu announced that the trio will return for a third season of hilarious deadly hijinks season two of the hit series is currently streaming on hulu in hollywood i'm rick damagella 527 82 degrees and still ahead on gmsa nasa is releasing more images from the webb telescope we're going to show you how the telescope is changing the way humans see the whole universe plus the site of a mass shooting in buffalo new york is set to open its doors once again Hey, what do you feed your furry friend? There are so many choices. The answer on choosing the right stuff coming up on GMSA at 6. This telescope is exquisitely tuned to observe galaxies forming at the origin of the universe. Making headlines this morning, NASA releasing stunning, never-before-seen images of our universe. Details coming up. It's going to be another dangerous day of triple digit temperatures. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA, how the city, county and state are preparing. And taking a look outside with live cam, we are expecting to deal with the extreme heat once again, but the good news, it won't hit, hopefully it won't hit 107 again. And a good morning too. It is Tuesday, July 12th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, that's what Mike was saying. I think it's a little bit encouraging that it won't be as hot <laughs> as it was yesterday, right? And if you're really, really lucky, you're underneath a shower right now. Yes, indeed. Well, there are one or two uh, showers out there. And then if, yeah, if you're lucky again this afternoon, we'll have one or two of those uh, showers popping up. Right now, a lot of clear skies here in town and the temperature stands at 83. So 
it, it's kind of interesting to, you know, put it in perspective. We dropped 24 degrees since the high temperature yesterday, which you'd think, okay, it, it's cool, but that was from 107 just down to 83 degrees. We are so far above normal, almost 10 degrees above normal as of right now. Dew points at 69, which means, yeah, there's still plenty of humidity out there right now. And as Mark was alluding to, hopefully you are uh, lucky to be underneath one of these uh, showers. Uh, they had looked like they were going to start to sort of fizzle on out there for a while, but now they're regenerating and a couple of more uh, thunderstorms are developing here. So right around G Gonzales and Nixon, you are due for these in just the next couple of minutes. They're moving down to the southwest at uh, about 13 miles per hour and continue. Looks like they are going to be holding together as the uh, the morning rolls on. So even around Floresville, you might see one or two of these showers later on this morning. So that's encouraging. Of course, it is just, you know, one little dot out there, but we'll take anything we can get. 86 is what it feels like this morning when you factor in the humidity. 87 in Stinson, same thing up there at Canyon Lake, 80 in New Braunfels right now. And throughout the rest of today, yeah, 104. No, it's not going to be 107, but we are st it's still, as uh, Sarah was teasing it, for that story, it's still going to be dangerously hot today. The 10% chance for one or two showers or a thunderstorm out there. At least we are going to be seeing a slight bit of relief down the road a couple of days down the road. For today, we still have excessive heat warnings and advisories in effect up until 7 o'clock tonight. The heat index is going to be in some places, especially down to the south, up around 112 degrees, 108 here in town. Weekend forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. Is that accident still out there, Stephen? Yeah, unfortunately, Mike, uh, we are still seeing those flashing lights uh, and uh, 410 near I-10 East. And we're going to get to that, but really want to give our viewers a look around town. There's US 90 at Couples looking a little bit busier. 281 at Sprucewood, not sure what's going on there, but we're going to have to take a closer look, find out exactly what's taking place and how that's going to impact your drive time. But right now, a lot of these other spots in TransGuide not showing anything. But here's the issue, I-10 East at Loop 410. Now, let's take you right to the map because our map is picking that up a little bit further down on Houston. Right now, Texas has that reported in that same vicinity, but we're going to label that at Loop 410 northbound because that's where we know the direction is near the exit to I-10 East, as you could just see on that shot from TransGuide. We know that there is some guardrail or pieces of a guardrail that still remain out there, so you got to give those first responders plenty of time, but it doesn't really look like it's causing so much of an issue just yet. We're going to work to get some information, so no word yet on any injuries, but again, as always, hope everybody's okay. All right, let's go ahead and give you a wide look at the map. Not a lot to talk about. Thankfully, active construction spots, and if the morning does stay quiet, we'll continue to bring you that information. But for now, the travel times to San Antonio, they're not looking bad. 29 minutes, still pretty green from Seguin on I-10 westbound if you're traveling in. A little more than half an hour on 87 northbound, traveling in from Lavernia to the downtown area and about a 28-minute drive time heading up from Floresville. So we're not seeing any delays just yet, but if the morning does continue on, we're going to see more folks out there. We'll watch the roads closely, but as always, make sure you're doing the same. Mark Stuff. Stephen, thank you. Like Mike and our team of meteorologists has forecast, we will see another day of dangerous triple digit temperatures. Sarah Costa is live downtown with how the city is preparing and how ERCOT, the entity that manages the state's electrical grid, is asking people to conserve power. Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Steph. We all know these uh, these triple digit temperatures are dangerous. It's why the city, county and state are preparing city planning to have cooling centers open to nonprofit like Meals on Wheels, planning to distribute hundreds of cooling kits. But I want to take a look at the state's electrical grid first. So take a look on your screen. This is what you see when you head to ERCOT's website. This is an energy graph that shows the demand and supply of our state energy. The blue line shows the demand, that line at the bottom there, and that top line shows the supply. And you can see how close those two lines are to meeting. Now at this time, the demand has not gone above the supply. However, ERCOT has said they are not expecting wide power outages like we saw in the winter of 2021, but are asking residents to conserve power. CPS energy customers are being asked during peak hours of 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. to set their AC to 78 degrees or higher, turn off lights and avoid doing laundry or using other large appliances. Pool owners are being asked to turn off their pool pumps and owners of electric cars 
are asked being to avoid charging them during that time. Now, the city will have several cooling centers open today until 10 p.m. City workers are reaching out to people in the homeless community, delivering water to them and offering free transportation to those cooling centers. Now, VIA will also be offering free rides to the cooling centers to anyone who needs them. Meals on Wheels, the nonprofit, is has been making 400 cooling kits for their residents. Now, they need volunteers to help distribute them this Saturday. Now, you can find out how to volunteer for Meals on Wheels to help distribute those cooling kits and also a list of all the cooling centers in our area. Again, staying open till 10 p.m. All of those right now on KSAT.com. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. 537, check out these images NASA just released. That is just spectacular. They're from the new James Webb Space Telescope, and they're changing the way we humans see our universe. CNN's Amy Kiley reports on why this technology has scientists and space enthusiasts so excited. This changes everything, sort of. We expect it to basically transform our understanding of the universe. He's talking about the James Webb Space Telescope and what it can reveal. You're seeing galaxies that are shining around other galaxies and you're seeing just a small little portion of the universe. NASA says the telescope captures the deepest images of the universe humans have ever seen. This galaxy cluster is shown as it appeared about 4.6 billion years ago. What I have seen just moved me. I frankly got emotional. The telescope doesn't just peek into a galaxy far, far away. It looks back in time. This telescope is exquisitely tuned to observe galaxies forming at the origin of the universe. That's because it shows stars so distant they might not even exist by the time their light reaches the telescope. In fact, by then, much of that light has stretched into infrared waves, invisible to us, but not to Webb. Over the 13 and a half billion years that the light has been traveling, the universe has been expanding and lift off. That's why the telescope is launching a whole new way to gaze at the stars. Amy Kiley, KSAT 12 News. The Buffalo, New York grocery store where 10 people died in a mass shooting back on May 14th is set to reopen this week. Top's friendly market will officially reopen to the public Friday. It comes two months after an 18 year old gunman carried out what authorities say was a racially motivated attack. The suspect is facing numerous charges, including murder and attempted murder as a hate crime. Thursday is the two-month anniversary of the mass shooting. That afternoon, a memorial service will be held to remember the victims and employees affected by the tragedy. Attorneys for Johnny Depp are asking a Virginia judge to deny Amber Heard's request for a mistrial, calling her legal arguments, quote, frivolous. Heard filed a motion last week asking a judge to declare a mistrial and order a new trial. She argues the damages awarded to her ex-husband are excessive and unsupported. In response, Depp's attorney said the actress waived her right to challenge the accuracy of the jur jury panel because her team didn't raise the issue with the court at the time. For the first time in two decades, the exchange rate between the euro and U.S. dollar is nearly the same. The two currencies less than a cent away from parity. The euro was hovering around a dollar point zero zero seven cents. That's down nearly 15 percent just since the start of the year. It's being caused by fears of recession in Europe and stoked by high inflation, as well as energy supply uncertainty caused by Russia's war in Ukraine. According to analysts, a series of aggressive interest rate hikes by central banks with slowing economic growth will keep pressure on the euro while sending investors toward the U.S. dollar as a safe haven. Time now, 541 and 81 degrees for now. Ready for some free fries? We'll show you how to get some from two major fast food chains. And taking a look outside with a live cam, not much relief on the way, but we are expecting it to maybe not be triple digits tomorrow, or excuse me, Thursday. We'll take what we can get at this point. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back. 543, drivers finally catching a break at the gas pump. Gas prices are falling across several states. Right now, the average gas price here in San Antonio is around $3.90 a gallon. So CNN's Jen Sullivan shows us how long this relief will last. A plummet at the gas pump. After several months of soaring costs, prices appear to be falling. 
According to a Gas Buddy analysis, the national average gas price has fallen 27 days straight after peaking to an historic high in mid-June. There's reason to be optimistic. Gas prices have already been falling for three straight weeks. Patrick DeHaan, head of petroleum analysis at Gas Buddy, says in the weeks ahead, we could see thousands of gas stations falling under $4 per gallon, specifically on the Gulf Coast and southern U.S. states like Georgia, North and South Carolina, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, Alabama, Arkansas, and Tennessee. Gas prices will go lower, even at those stations that are just freshly dropping under that $4 mark. And a lot of that is because the, the plummet in the price of oil that's recently occurred will likely take two to three weeks for stations to fully pass along. Last week, the price of crude oil dropped below $100 a barrel for the first time since May. According to AAA, the national average for a regular gallon of gas has fallen to $4.68, about 30 cents cheaper than last month. And experts say falling oil prices will continue to keep costs down for consumers. But for how long? We could see gas prices decline another 25 to as much as 50 cents a gallon in the weeks ahead, as long as there are no unexpected outages or disruptions that could cause oil prices to reverse and go back up. Potential disruptions include an unexpected outage, major hurricane, or data showing a stronger economy than anticipated. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. Quarter to six. And have you had any delays on flights recently? How the Department of Transportation says it's going to hold airlines accountable. And welcome back. It's 548. In your morning consumer headlines, the Department of Transportation is expected to enforce penalties against 10 airlines. This comes after passengers with canceled flights experienced lengthy delays during the pandemic. Officials could find the airlines or order them to stop a practice if it's determined to be unfair. While no airlines were named, Transport, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg says the department has investigations open right now. Tomorrow's National French Fry Day, so here's how you can score some this week at no cost. McDonald's and Wendy's are giving customers a free order of fries all week long. At McDonald's, no purchase necessary. However, you do need to order your fries through the McDonald's app. Same for Wendy's, just order through the Wendy's app. That's not how they get us with the apps. I'm just getting too many apps on my phone at this point. They got us. Yeah, they do, especially for French Fry Day. What about you? Where are you going to get your french fries from, Stephen? Oh, man, I don't know. Sweet potato fries? Ooh, oh, that's That always good. hits the spot, but we'll see. We'll see. All right, let's go ahead and get a look at traffic, because all we are seeing right now is just some smooth sailings from these shots at TransGuide. Really haven't saw, uh, seen a lot of issues out there, except for a few of those trouble spots. We know we mentioned 281 a little bit earlier, where we saw some flashing lights out there. Talk to our friends at TransGuide. That's actually some road work taking place, and that should be wrapping up in the next few minutes. But we are still seeing those problems out along I-10 along 410 over on the east side of town. So let's just go ahead and take you to it. There is that work we told you about, but the problem going to be right over here of Loop 410 northbound. That exit to I-10 east is blocked right now because there was a crash that was reported a little bit earlier, and we know that there is a guardrail that first responders are working to clear up. Again, as a reminder, not sure exactly how this crash happened or if anybody was hurt, but we always hope everyone's okay right now. Traffic looking like it's moving just okay as well. But let's go and give you a wide look at the map now. Not a lot to talk about, but it does appear we may have jinxed ourselves. It looks like a crash may have just popped up there along 410 over near the west side of town. We'll find out how that's going to impact your drive time. But for now, check this out. US 90 Bear County guardrail repairs will continue to take place up until Friday, July 15th. We know this is going to start around 9 in the morning, but the work will actually start uh, getting out there a little bit earlier. The cruise that is until 5 p.m. Alternating main lane and ramp closures in both directions right there at the Montgomery Road. But of course, that information is posted on our website at ksat.com slash traffic. Mike Oster H. Thank you, sir. Nice to see, you know, the past couple of afternoons, we've had a few of those showers and a couple of thunderstorms pop up in the afternoon. And this is a nice little treat for some folks. A couple of uh, showers and even a thunderstorm or two have been uh, kind of holding together. They moved in here from the, the northeast. And obviously, it's not a lot, but hey, we'll take anything we can get. There's even a few lightning strikes that had looked like these were almost 
wanting to die down, but they have definitely been holding together. And again, they are sliding down to the uh, southeast at roughly 13 miles per hour. So at that pace of right there around a little about uh, 630 this morning, this cell going down to the uh, southeast as well. And let me do right here with this and we'll track this one. This is going to continue again about 13, 15 miles per hour. So uh, Smiley right around 604 Nixon about uh, 631. Again, there are some indications just looking at these that they are definitely holding together uh, a couple of decent downpours in there as well. So that's encouraging. Obviously not a drought breaker, but we'll take anything we can get. Great looking picture from a couple of evenings ago. It sure doesn't tell the whole story though, because that looks like a nice refreshing picture, even though it was well up into the hundreds all around the area on Sunday. A lot of clear skies and not quite the glow of the sunrise this morning. Dew points measure moisture in the atmosphere. Still very high upper 60s, low 70s, and that's why we have heat index readings that are about three, four, five degrees above the actual air temperatures. Now feels like 88 at Canyon Lake. Yesterday, of course, we hit 107. That's a uh, bad reading right there. Add roughly 10 to that. It was well up in the uh, 104 range around Uvalde. 109 Spotford and 111 in Catula. These are the actual air temperatures that we hit yesterday, not even taking into account the humidity, which put the heat index up there because we're still having a little bit of humidity hanging around here in the afternoons, unfortunately. So we're going to make it well up in through the 80s through the rest of the morning already above normal by 11 o'clock at the normal high temperature and then above that going in toward noon up to 98 degrees and we're gonna hit 104 for a high today then add to the humidity on add the humidity on top of that and that's what it will feel like that 10 percent chance for a stray shower or two but again even though the humidity does drop down somewhat there's still going to be enough of it out there when you have 104 for high temperature that little bit just adds it so that's why it's going to be feeling more like a 108 later on this afternoon and one 12 down around Catula. A stray shower or two, you know, in the afternoon, just few and far between. You'd see it on radar, just hope and wish that it comes into your backyard. But again, most of us aren't going to be seeing any rain today. 98 at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 104. It'll feel like 108, a stray shower or two. Heat warnings, excessive heat warnings for the purple shade area and heat advisories for the, all of the area up until 7 o'clock tonight. Brutally hot temperatures. Uh, it's still going to be very hot tomorrow. Slight break end of the week and going into the weekend and still one or two of those afternoon showers through the end of the week. More coming up after this. Coming up here on a Tuesday on GMA, we'll have the latest on the high stakes hearing of the January 6th committee. Expected to focus on former President Trump and the signals that he sent his supporters who stormed the Capitol. Also this morning, new COVID concerns, the fast spreading new variant fueling a resurgence in cases across the nation. Dr. Besser is here with what you need to know about it. That and so much more on GMA. There's a new competition for San Antonio. San Antonio Pets Alive fundraising with a pet photo contest. Person with the most votes will get a photo for their pets, uh, will get, for their photo, will get their pets photo on a limited edition Alamo Beer Company can. If you want to compete, we have all the details online at ksat.com. Well, still to come in our next hour, GMSA, a remarkable story of an 11 year old's recovery after being struck by lightning during a family fishing trip. Plus, what do you feed your furry friend? There are so many choices. How do you make the right one? The answer on choosing the good stuff is coming up. And today's one of the busiest shopping days of the year online. Why Amazon Prime Day is off to such a hot start. And we've already had some problems on the roads this morning. There's I-35 at Highway 90. A lot of flashing lights right now. Stephen Cavazos will have an update coming up. This morning on GMSA, following up on that massive fire that left thousands without power, what we're learning from CPS Energy. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it's 6 a.m. and it's 81 degrees already. It's going to be another hot day. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday, July 12th. Thanks for joining us this morning. I hope you stayed cool yesterday. And today, I guess the good news is it won't be as hot as it was yesterday. Not quite. 
Mike is here with yeah. that, and he's tracking a few very small, very isolated showers or storms this morning. Yeah, at least there are a couple of them out there, um, but you know, yeah, good news, kind of sugarcoating it. It won't be 107. It's still okay. going to be blisteringly hot, but it won't be 107. So we'll try and look at the glass half full with this one. A couple of clouds. We're looking off to the east right now. Some clear skies to the west. And with these clouds, uh, as Mark was talking about, yeah, a couple of showers and thunderstorms out there. These have been holding together throughout most of the evening. And earlier, it looked like they were just sort of fizzling on out. And they've sort of gotten a, a new life to them. So we do have uh, even a couple of thunderstorms, a couple of lightning strikes that are being detected here. So these are coming in toward Nixon, Carn City. You're going to be getting a couple of them and another little batch on the northern end of this just to the northwest of Gonzales. And these will continue to work their way down to the southwest at about 13, 15 miles per hour and holding together should uh, looks like maybe even uh, head in toward Floresville if they decide to hold together, which it does look like they are going to as of right now. So yeah, not a drop breaker at all, but at least you're getting a little bit of rain and maybe with that moist ground that will help to keep temperatures down a couple of extra degrees your backyard down there to the southeast. Heat index right now feels like 84 in Pleasanton, 85 Canyon Lake, 84 here in town as well. And uh, yeah, temperatures. We are going to be staying a good five, six degrees or so above normal this morning, uh, right around 80 dropping or dropping down to that. That's it. And then already up to the upper 90s today at noon, well above the normal high temperature by noon and keep going from there. We are going to make it up to 104 later on today. Day, then add the heat index on top of that, and it's going to feel like roughly 108. We do have excessive heat warnings and heat advisories in effect for the entire area up until 7 o'clock tonight. In some areas, especially down to the south, the heat index is going to be up to about 112. Good news is, yeah, not only will we not hit yesterday's high, but temperatures will be dropping down just a few degrees by the end of the week and a couple of pop-up showers and thunderstorms once again this afternoon. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's the latest? Hey, well, we're entering the 6 a.m. hour, Mike, with some issues here along 35 at US 90. Earlier, uh, we showed you this as we went to break, but uh, a little bit earlier than that, we actually saw some smoke coming up from there. This looks like it could be a vehicle fire. Now, no word yet exactly the direction this is pointing in if the driver was uh, faced any injuries or anyone else was hurt. So we have to wait to get some information right now, but it is not looking good right in this direction because we are seeing traffic starting to pick up along 35. So this is a pretty busy area, so we're we'll going to have to watch it closely. We'll have some updates in the next few minutes, but we have been watching this spot right over here and it has not gotten any better. It actually looks like it's gotten a little worse. Loop 410, the northbound lane, that exit to I-10 East still blocked following a crash that happened earlier in the morning. Morning. But we do know that first responders are working to clear up some of the pieces there, including a guardrail, which looks like it could be blocking that exit ramp there. But while Mike was talking about the forecast, I did want to try to map out something, map out a quick direction for you really quick there. US 87, try to get off there a little bit early and take Foster Road. If you're trying to get on to I-10, you'll avoid a lot of that slowdown that we're seeing along the northbound lanes of 410. So I'll get more specifics in the next few minutes, but you can see that would probably be the better route to take as opposed to just sitting in traffic for a little bit, but we're going to have to watch that spot closely. But wider look at the map really just shows a lot of those active construction spots, and we're going to talk more about that a little bit later on. I'm not too concerned about it being an issue for any of the drivers, so the issues will really be these uh, isolated incidents that we're spotting on trans guide. So we'll have to watch those areas closely, but looks like if you're traveling into San Antonio from any of these communities, you are in luck. There is some relief on the roads there for you. 37 northbound, pretty pleasant from Pleasanton with a 28 minute drive time, half an hour, the usual time coming in from Highway 90 in the eastbound lanes from Castroville and arrival from Lytle should be about 16 minutes on I-35 northbound. So no trouble there, but the trouble still remains here of 35 at US 90, a spot we'll watch closely and have more updates in the next few minutes. Guys. Thank you, sir. New this morning, a woman is behind bars after a police report says she threatened to shoot up a school in Live Oak earlier this summer. Our Sarah Coast is live downtown with the details. Sarah, do we know how she made that threat? Good morning, Mark. This all happened on June 8th. She was arrested a couple of days later. Now, how this happened, police say that she allegedly called the Live Oak Learning Center's principal and on his cell phone 
Just take a look at your screen. This is her mugshot, 28-year-old Ariana Brown. Police say the evening of June 8th, the principal of Live Oak Learning Center received a phone call from a blocked number. He told police a woman's voice told him she and others were going to go to the school the next day to beat someone up. The police affidavit says she allegedly said if that person was not at the school, that they would shoot the school up. The principal called police the next day. There was a police presence at the school. All school officials and parents were also notified of the threat. Live Oak police investigating the case were able to work with cell phone carrier companies to track down the blocked number and linked it to Brown and found her address. Now, Brown agreed to speak with police, but told them she stumbled on a message exchange about a potential threat and that she just wanted to warn the school. However, after police finished their investigation, it was determined that she did make the call and the threat. Now, she was arrested earlier this summer on June 13th, and police say she is now facing felony charges of a terroristic threat. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. This morning, San Antonio firefighters responded to a warehouse on the northeast side where some pallets were on fire. Now, that happened around 6.30 last night in the 1000 block of Eddy Road. That's near I-10 and Loop 410. Fire officials say they were able to knock down the fire pretty quickly once they got there. And the business where it happened was closed at the time and no one was inside the warehouse. No other structures were affected. Fire investigators tell us that they are still trying to figure out an official cause. This morning, CPS energy crews are trying to figure out what caused a fire that left thousands without peak power yesterday during one of the hottest parts of the day. The fire happened around 6 p.m. at the CPS substation off West Pyra near Hancock. The fire was contained, but around 3,500 customers were left in the dark for a while. In a tweet, CPS energy said the customers were take offline for safety. So far, the cause is still unknown. Customers we talked to said the shutoff impacted their businesses and classes, but it was also a reminder to stay alert. Very it's hot. miserable, and I'm from Arizona, so this is still miserable for me. Go find someone who has electricity still and go see them. So That's a good idea. I don't know. Other than that, what more can you do? Drive around in your car, I guess. Gas. <laughs> That's all you can do. The outage came hours after a text alert was sent out asking CPS Energy customers to conserve energy. Thousands of Houston residents were also left in the dark in stifling conditions as a heat wave swept through the area. It started around 4 a.m. on Monday in neighborhoods across the city, shutting down restaurants, forcing workers to throw food out. Local power company Centerpoint Energy has not released any information about what caused the outages. Trending now on KSAT.com, a local police department in its evidence room. The subject of a new defender's investigation involves the Shirts Police Department. It's concerned that missing evidence there could impact cases in Bear, Comal, and Guadalupe counties. A source familiar with the case says the Shirts Police Department brought in an outside consultant to organize its property room. That firm did not respond for comment. Shirts Police Department now has a new chief running the department. You can find the full story on KSAT.com. The Texas Court of Criminal Appeals has issued a stay of execution for Marmito Gonzalez just two days before it was supposed to happen. He is convicted of shooting and killing 18-year-old Bridget Townsend, whose remains were found two years after she vanished in 2001. According to court records, a stay of execution was given because a doctor who testified as a trial expert gave false testimony that could have affected the jury's vote. Right now, it's not clear if this will impact the decision to let Gonzalez donate a kidney before his execution. A Bear County District Court judge trying to help alleviate an overcrowding problem at the Bear County Jail. Right now there are 5,000 beds at the jail, but 4,600 are occupied. Judge Velia Meza believes a possible solution is spending time on a docket of cases that could be resolved quicker than others. For 40 court cases Monday, Judge Meza said she is hoping to get them all to trial or receive, resolve rather through plea deals. And there is no hiding from the heat, and it's even worse for people dealing with homelessness. One man who spoke to KSET says he doesn't know how he would survive if it wasn't for places like Corazon Ministries and Haven for Hope. Both organizations say they have not seen an uptick in people coming in despite the heat, and they are seeing their average numbers. They believe it's because most of the homeless population in town might be used to the heat and would rather tough it out. Now, Corazon and Haven for Hope say outreach is critical to at least provide people water and cooling towels if they reject other services.
10 minutes past the hour, 81 degrees. And still to come on GMSA, NASA says our universe is a lot bigger than we originally knew. Why the agency is making history with a new telescope. Next. Plus a remarkable story of an 11 year old's recovery after being struck by lightning during a family fishing trip. And taking a look outside with live cam, the heat continues today, but right now it is 81 degrees, so a good time for running errands. We'll be right back. This morning, one of the biggest shopping days of the year has arrived. It's Amazon Prime Day, and people around the world are getting ready for some major online discounts. This include things like electronics, home goods, and toys. Last year's Prime Day saw sales over $6 billion. It's the largest two-day sale in Amazon's history. And check out these images NASA just released. They are from the James Webb Space Telescope, and they're changing the way humans see the universe. So these are some of the deepest images of the universe humans have ever seen. The telescope doesn't just peek into a galaxy far, far away. It looks back in time. So it's showing stars so distant they might not even exist by the time their light reaches us. Chances of getting struck by lightning, less than one in a million, but an 11-year-old boy in Florida has quite the story to tell when he goes back to school this fall. Levi Stock recovering after getting struck by lightning in the leg almost two weeks ago during a family fishing trip. He spent three days in ICU before heading home on the 4th of July, but even though he's recovered, his doctor says he still needs to take it easy for the next six weeks. Oh my goodness, how scary. He's a lucky boy. Yes, he is. Glad he's okay. Time now, 6.15, and time to check back with Stephen Cavazos about the slowdowns there on I-35 and Highway 90. You know, not the only slowdown we're spotting this morning, Steph. Let's get a look here at 35 at US 90. Earlier, we showed you this shot. Looked like there was some smoke coming out from that direction, and right now we are seeing that traffic is moving in the southbound lanes of 35, really without a whole lot of trouble, but we are seeing those slowdowns, and right there, you can make it out. We do have some road flares placed out there along the road where we do see first responders and what it looks like a Texas hero truck. So we're hoping everybody's OK, but thankfully looks like traffic is moving, but still seeing a little bit of a slowdown along southbound of 35 near US 90. So uh, I'll look for some alternative routes here, but we're hoping that this mess clears up before morning rush gets here because that's when we really, really start to see it get busy. So another area that's been causing problems throughout the morning over here, Loop 410 northbound that exit I 10. Gosh, it's still blocked out there. We know that there's a piece of guardrail that first responders are working to clear up because it is blocking that exit to I-10 East. And that's why we're seeing this buildup along the northbound lanes. A lot of drivers may be trying to get onto I-10. So here's a quick suggestion. We mentioned this a little bit earlier. I mapped it out here for you. What you'll do is get onto US 87 and then exit Foster Road. Make sure you take a left out there. Now you'll continue on the Foster Road right there. You'll be able to hit I-10, the frontage road, so you can get into the east or the westbound lanes without any trouble. So you'll avoid a lot of that traffic that we're seeing out there but it is not looking like a good morning in some of these areas of town. But bigger picture is actually a lot better. We're seeing a lot more green and just some active construction spots, which we'll tell you about a little bit later. The main issue is we want drivers to be prepared whenever they see these types of situations. Mike Osterhage, just not a pretty sight this early in the morning. No, it's not. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Beautiful sight yesterday, although it was well off in the distance. Those uh, thunderstorm clouds that developed well up to the north, and it's always kind of uh, deceiving when you look at them, and then you look at radar and you see just how far away these were. Yesterday afternoon, these things were up uh, around Austin, and of course, really didn't make it into our area that much, but there will be a few more of them out there uh, later on today. Beautiful view. Thank you very much for that picture, Mr. McClellan. All right, we've got some clouds hanging around here right now, and and further off to the east, we do have a couple of these uh, leftover showers and even a, a few thunderstorms. Those little white lines are the uh, the lightning strikes right there. And these showers and storms are moving off to the uh, southwest at roughly 13, 15 miles per hour, and they have sort of been holding together as well this morning. So again, as these work their way down to the uh, the southwest and be almost to Carn City by say seven o'clock or so, uh, Helena right around 6:42, and the one up to the north. This one also is going to continue to work its way down to the uh, southwest at again about 13 miles per hour, and that's going to make it right around Nixon at 6:40. 
44 in Pandora just about 7 o'clock. So it is encouraging to see these out there. Um, it's not any sort of a drought breaker, but at least some folks are obviously getting a little bit of rain and some folks will get a little bit of rain later on this afternoon. Heat index right now low to mid 80s around much of the area and it's just I mean it just doesn't cool down that much at night and air conditioners are just working overtime just just makes me cringe to see what the bill is going to be this month after last month's way over the top electric bill. We are going to be up uh, right around 100 degrees already by early afternoon, already at the normal high temperature by late morning. Just to sort of put things in perspective, 104 for high today, 10% chance for one or two of those showers out there. Adding the humidity, it's going to feel like about 108, 112 Catula, 109 in Beeville, and 110 in New Braunfels. And again, I just have to emphasize, all of these numbers, those are in the shade. What it feels like just feeling the air temperature and the humidity on top of that doesn't take into account if you're out in the direct sun. It's so you just have to just avoid that as much as possible. So those few leftover showers around here this morning, those will die down mid morning and then by late this afternoon, we see a couple of more of the uh, showers, even a thunderstorm trying to pop up around here. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, you know, one of those where you look at it on radar, hope it comes into your backyard, but unfortunately, most of us won't be seeing rain today. Here's what's going on. So the high is still in control of our weather right now, and it's just pushing down on the atmosphere. We get the little glitches kind of sliding around here from the northeast around that clockwise flow, and yeah, it's just a kind of a tease, if you will. It is going to weaken ever so slightly going in toward Thursday, Friday. So temperatures will be down just a couple of degrees. We'll still be right around upper 90s, 100 over the weekend. And what we're hoping for then is there is a little bit of a low trying to develop here down in the Gulf of Mexico that that would sort of move close enough in our direction. We get enough of an onshore flow to maybe see a couple of showers around here by the uh, middle part of well, you know, one or two of the pop ups in the afternoon, but by the middle part of next week, hopefully something a little more substantial tries to develop out there. But again, it is still just kind of wishful thinking as of right now. At least temperatures won't be just as ridiculously hot as we go further on into the future. 98 at noon today, partly cloudy skies and then a high temperature makes it up to again 104 heat index 108. One or two of those stray showers out there. Excessive heat warnings and heat advisories posted for all of the area. The purple is the excessive heat warning up until 7 o'clock tonight. Again, those uh, heat index readings about 112, especially in some of our southern counties. Tomorrow still going to be really, really hot and then just plain hot Thursday, Friday and run around 100 Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Those couple of pop up afternoon showers the rest of the uh, the week here and there and then perhaps a few more next week, but Looking back, I think for about the past three or four weeks, I've said that, you know, hey, next week, mm -hmm. you know, it's like the fish story should have been here last week. Fishing, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and, and yeah. then, yeah, models are trying to pick up on these things, and then it just sort of fizzles on out. It's, yeah. 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 Well, I like the variations, the really hot and First plain, and just plain just hot. hot. Just plain yeah, hot. So. Yeah. yeah, it's like bagels now. Thank you, Mike. 621, <laughs> about 81 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, experts recently discovered a new dinosaur species. After the break, we're going to tell you how much it's going to cost to get your hands on one of the fossils. Ladies, six minutes, please. <laughs> this is my life. It's not always picture perfect. Plus, I'm dealing with bleeding from uterine fibroids. Enter MyFembry a once daily pill for women with heavy menstrual bleeding due to uterine fibroids. With my Fembry, heavy bleeding went down by 84%. Serious risks include heart attack, stroke, and blood clots. Don't take my Fembry if you've had any of these or have uncontrolled high blood pressure, are over 35 in smoke, could be pregnant, or have or had osteoporosis, liver disease, undiagnosed vaginal bleeding, certain cancers, or an allergic reaction to it. Don't use longer than two years as bone loss may occur. Pregnancy loss can occur and changes in periods may make it hard to know if you're pregnant. If you think you are, stop taking it right away. Other risks are depression, suicidal thoughts or actions, abnormal liver tests, high blood pressure, and passing of the fibroid. Less bleeding, same life? I'll take it. Ask your doctor about my Fembry. My life, my Fembry. 
If you've got some money to burn, a unique item from the long ago past is up for grabs. Just $8 million. You can own a skeleton of a Gorgosaurus, a cousin of the T-Rex. This carnivore lived around 77 million years ago. The fossil is 10 feet tall, 22 feet long, and discovered in 2018 in Montana. The auction for the dinosaur starts at the end of the month. We'll wait to see if Nicolas Cage makes a bid after all. Oh, He's yeah. already owned stuff like that, I believe. <laughs> Eight million, though? Yeah. Ouch. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> 625 and 81 degrees for now. Still at 630, the community of Uvalde is still waiting on the release of video on the police response to the massacre at Robb Elementary. What state lawmakers are saying about it, next. And we're tracking the latest headlines this morning, including a teen in the hospital after being hit by a car while riding a bike. We've already had a couple of incidents on the highway. Live look right now, 35 at 90, where one of those was. Just a few flares are left. Looks like things have uh, returned somewhat to normal. We'll check in with Stephen Cavazos coming up right here on Good Morning San Antonio, the Tuesday edition. We'll be back. Keeping an eye on the state's energy supply. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. Coming up on GMSA, how residents are being asked to conserve power. Down to 81 degrees, a few clouds out there this morning. The sun is up and uh, as it continues here in South Texas, Mother Nature left the oven door open and walked out of the kitchen. Good morning, everybody. It's <laughs> Tuesday, July 12th. Hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, 81 degrees, I'll take that. I wish it would last all day, but we know that will not be the case. We would love for that to be our afternoon high temperature, right. Mike, but at uh, at least 20 degrees, right? Yes, and I think actually getting back to the, the oven door, I think it's cooler opening the oven door when it's on than it is stepping out. Outside. Wow. It's very possible. At least it was yesterday when we had uh, 107 for a high temperature. And yeah, that set a record yesterday. We've got a couple of clouds hanging around here right now. A little bit of a glow of the early morning sunrise. Temperature is at 81 degrees and dew points at 70. Means a lot of humidity is out there. We do have a heat index to deal with this morning. But also some folks, and this is not a bad thing, are dealing with a couple of showers out there. And this little disturbance, which again, I keep talking about how earlier this morning it looked like it was sort of dying down the reds and oranges were decreasing and now these things have been holding together quite nicely so right around Carn City you're getting a couple of these uh, these thunderstorms around here a few lightning strikes are being detected nice little shower up around Nixon as well and this extends just went past the I-10 and this is looking like there are indications that this will continue to hold together. So Floresville, Lavernia, you may also get a couple of these nice little showers around here this morning. Not a drop breaker, but hey, we'll take anything. 84 is what it feels like out there when you factor in the humidity. 86 in Canyon Lake as well as Castroville right now. And yeah, warm, humid, a couple of those showers off to the east. They will then be dying down in the next few hours. And then we'll see a couple of more later on this afternoon. Still blisteringly hot, not as hot as yesterday, but heat index is going to be way, way up there again today. Tomorrow, still, it's going to be hot. 104 today, 103 tomorrow, a stray shower or two, and that's going to be the case uh, Thursday and Friday, but at least temperatures will be down a couple of degrees. So we'll take upper 90s right around 100. That'll be the situation in through the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, we had a couple of decent problems out there. Still the situation? We're still seeing some problems, Mike, but uh, we're also seeing some progress. I-10 East at Loop 410, this has been the big issue out them throughout the morning. We know we had a crash out there a little bit earlier in the morning, and that left some debris on the roadways, including a piece of a guardrail. So first responders were actually out there some time to clear this up. And right now we're seeing a better scene than what we saw a little bit earlier. But we are so also locating and you can see right there in the trans guide camera, one of those hero trucks that is blocking that exit to the east I 10 East. So right now let's check out how that's impacting traffic, because now that we are inching closer to morning rush, it looks like we're starting to see the impacts really picking up in the northbound lanes of Loop 410. But don't worry, because although we are seeing some of those slowdowns in the area, we do have a quick detour for you if you're just waking up with us. Let's take a quick drive around over here to US 87. If you're still coming up on the northbound lanes, might be wise to get onto US 87 and then take exit Foster Road and then take a left. What you'll do there is just continue on a Foster Road until you hit I-10. And without that any trouble, you won't really want to encounter a lot of those slowdowns, but uh, it may take you just a tad bit longer.
longer. So just keep that in mind, but it bets it beats sitting in that traffic that we just saw from that trans guide camera. So let's go ahead and give you a wide look at the map now at 633. Uh, thankfully, nothing else to talk about. Looks like a few stalls in the area. So as a reminder, check your vehicles. Make sure that anytime you see a stranded driver, you move over or slow down along the highway. Those are the rules of the road, but we did have a vehicle fire out on 35 in the southbound lanes. Looks like that's cleared out. So some good news for drivers maybe trying to get onto US 90. But one last look here at Trans Guide I 10 East at Loop 410. Hopefully we'll have a better update before the show wraps up. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. We will see another day of dangerous triple, triple digit temperatures and that heat causing the state's power demand to increase. Sarah Costa is live downtown with how the city is preparing and how ERCOT, the entity that manages the state's electrical grid, is asking people to conserve power again. Sarah. Good morning, Stephanie. We, all, we know that these temperatures are dangerous. It's why the city, state, and county are all preparing to keep residents safe and conserve power from having planned cooling centers to cooling kits being made for residents. But I want to take a look at the state's power grid graph. Now, this is what you see when you go to ERCOT's website. This is an energy graph that shows the demand and supply of our state energy currently. The blue line, which is the line below, shows the demand and the top line shows the supply and you can see how close those two lines are getting to meeting and at this time the demand has not gone above the supply. ERCOT has also said they are not expecting wide power outages like we saw in the winter of 2021 but are asking residents to conserve power. CPS customers are being asked during peak hours from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. to set their AC to 78 degrees or higher, turn off lights, avoid doing laundry or using other large appliances. Pool owners are being asked to turn off their pool pumps and owners of electric cars are being asked to avoid charging them in the afternoon during that time. The city will have several cooling centers open today until 10 p.m. City workers are reaching out to people in the homeless community delivering water to them and offering free transportation to those cooling centers. VIA will also be offering free rides to those cooling centers to anyone who needs them. Meals on Wheels, the nonprofit, has been making 400 cooling kits for their residents and already planned deliveries. However, they need volunteers to help distribute them this Saturday. So you can find out how to volunteer for Meals on Wheels to help distribute those cooling kits to their residents and also the locations of all those cooling centers. Just head to ksat.com right now and you can see that link that lists all of those things. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. Also new this morning, a teenage boy is in the hospital after he was struck by a vehicle in a south side neighborhood. It happened just after midnight while the team was riding his bike at Quintard Street and East White Avenue. That's near Mission Road. Police say a woman struck the boy with her SUV after he rode out into the intersection. The woman did stop to help and is not facing charges. The teenager is expected to recover. And one woman is in jail in connection to a robbery in northwest Bear County. So this is 20-year-old Penelope Ann Roth. And according to an arrest affidavit, she and two other men stole a man's truck back on July 1st outside a home on Grapevine Pass in the Leon Springs area. The report says Roth hit the man in the head with a brick while one of the other suspects held him at gunpoint. She was later arrested and is facing an aggravated robbery charge. Her bond is set at $100,000. Now to the latest out of Uvalde, a Texas House committee investigating the Robb Elementary shooting met yesterday. They interview witnesses, including Uvalde County Sheriff Ruben Nolasco. Nolasco's testimony was closed to the public and comes after a deposition was issued last week. The committee also announced they want to publicly release surveillance video from the hallway of Robb Elementary. I'm told the committee has seen the 77 minute video. Also, Uvalde Mayor and Texas DPS have agreed to release the video, but they've been blocked from doing so by the Uvalde County District Attorney, Christina Mitchell Busby. This video would be of the hallway footage from the Robb Elementary School. It would contain no graphic images or depictions of violence. It would literally begin after the shooter enters the room and end before a breach of that room. We called and emailed the DA's office yesterday and we were told she would not comment on anything related to this investigation. The committee hopes to release its preliminary report soon. 
Bear County Medical Examiner releasing a final update on victims from that migrant tragedy from two weeks ago. All 53 victims have been conclusively identified. They were discovered in a tractor trailer on Quintana Road back on June 27th. Of the 53 victims, 26 were from Mexico, 21 from Guatemala, and six from Honduras. Officials had to work with their respective countries' consulates to get identifications. The process to get all the remains returned is underway. Attorneys for Johnny Depp are asking a Virginia judge to deny Amber Heard's request for a mistrial, calling her legal arguments, quote, frivolous. Now, Heard filed a motion last week asking a judge to declare a mistrial and order a new trial. She argues the damages awarded to her ex-husband are excessive and unsupported. She also claims there were some discrepancies with a juror that compromised her rights to due process. Now, on Monday, Depp's attorney said the actress waived her right to challenge the accuracy of the jury panel because her team didn't raise the issue with the court at the time. 639, about 81 degrees. It's still ahead on GMSA. We all want the best for our pets, but how do you know you're giving them the right stuff? Well, we're going to take a look into it next. 642, nearly 40% of Americans have a dog. That adds up to a lot of furry friends to take care of. And in fact, we spend about $99 billion a year on pet food and products. And you want to make sure what you're buying to feed your pup is healthy. But how do you choose? Is homemade better than store-bought? Is natural the way to go? So David Sears breaks it down and what you should and shouldn't be looking for. Does your pup prefer canned or dry? Store-bought or homemade? Uh, I go to the meat place. He eats Purina Pro Plan because we went through a bunch of different ones and I reached out to a group of the same dogs and um, they said to do that one and we put him on that and it seems to work for him. There seems to be as many types of dog foods as there are dogs. So how do you choose which food is a fit for your Fido? It can be very complex. Veterinarian Brooke Delaney says there is no right choice. And first ask yourself, what life stage is my dog in. Most importantly, make sure it has the AFCO label. Make sure that the feeding officials have signed off that this is a balanced and complete diet that is not missing any really important ingredients or nutrients. If it does not have that AFCO label, I would put that food back and go to a different bag. It's just as important to make sure the AFCO label matches what the bag says. The label will say puppy if it's for puppies or seniors if it's for seniors. Maintenance can actually mean that it covers all life stages, which is something that you don't want. Also, look for proof of clinical trials. If you don't see that and it just says that it's a formulated diet, that should raise a red flag for you. And what about natural foods? Their natural can be written on any bag. There's no standards. Dr. Delaney says expensive does not necessarily mean better. It can be pricey and not contain all the proper vitamins and nutrients your dog needs. So bottom line, make sure it has the AFCO label. You can also go online and check to see if your dog food company has a board certified nutritionist on staff. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. Well, this morning, one of the biggest shopping days of the year has arrived. I think Steph's already got a cart full. <laughs> it is Amazon Prime Day, and people around the world are getting ready for some major online discounts. Those include items like electronics, home goods, and toys. Last year's Prime Day saw sales of over $6 billion. It was the largest two-day sale in Amazon's history. We'll see how this year goes. Oh, wow, it'll be interesting. And taking a look at the roads earlier, we had some slowdowns, but are things looking better, Stephen? We hoped for this and we got it. All right, I-10 East at Loop 410, that issue that has been causing a lot of problems for drivers has finally, finally cleared out. So big shout out to those first responders. But we know that this all stemmed from a crash that happened earlier in the morning. We are hoping everyone's okay, but thankfully traffic is looking a lot better. However, still seeing a little bit of a slowdown there along Loop 410 North down that exit to I-10 East where it was blocked for some time, but it has reopened. So I don't think we're really going to need this detour, but just in case, make sure you get on US 87, exit Foster Road and continue on until you get to I-10. But again, I don't think you're really going to need that detour. However, we're still uh, seeing some problems as the morning does progress. Looks like we do have a crash right over here. Loop 410 southbound at Old Pearsall Road. Thankfully, this crash not causing as many issues for drivers, but things are looking a lot better now that we have entered morning rush. Mike Osterhage. Thank you, sir. Skip the numbers, skip all the technical stuff. I think this pretty much sums up yesterday's heat. <laughs>
Uh, a steaming hot squirrel. That's how everybody felt. <laughs> it was just overwhelmingly hot, and uh, it's going to be the same today. We've got some clouds starting off this morning. There's the sun peeking over the horizon right now, and we've got these few showers, even uh, just a couple of a uh, couple of lightning strikes, and also notice how they have been kind of sliding down to the southwest and now as they move along it almost looks like they are taking more of a uh, a westward turn heading more straight to the west and so if these do indeed hold together not only Stockdale Lavernia perhaps Seguin and we're lucky if they continue to hold together. Now, a lot of times once the sun comes up, these do tend to die off a little bit more, but uh, maybe even into eastern Bear County later on this morning. And then further off to the northeast, we've got these disturbances that continue on in here. There's a couple of them right around Comfort. And then again, everything sort of taking that westward turn just to the south of Kerrville. Just a couple of those uh, light little showers over there in portions of the hill country. You know, we're kind of getting excited about these few little spots, but we'll take anything we can get and there'll be a few more later on this afternoon. 84 is the heat index right now in town. 86 is what it feels like at Canyon Lake and 83 in Hondo. Temperatures, we will stay well, right around 80, low 80s throughout the rest of the morning and then warm up very, very quickly once that sun comes up. We've got a couple of those leftover clouds, off, especially off to the east, and then we're going to make it up to normal high temperature. That's where we should be this time of year, and that's where we'll be at 11 o'clock if we could just stop there, but make it up to 98 at noon, 100, then going into the early afternoon hours and top off at 104 today, which will be a record. The current record is 103, and there's that 10% chance for another shower, stray thunderstorm to pop up later on this afternoon. We are still going to have enough humidity out there to make that 104 feel like 108. Heat index will be 112 in Catula. So again, these numbers are dangerously high. Your body, when it gets above an apparent temperature of 105, it just doesn't cool itself all that efficiently. So you really got to take it easy. Stay in the shade. At water, water, and more water. Here's those couple of leftover showers this morning, and then those will continue, like I said, to uh, die off later on this afternoon. We get a few more of those showers trying to pop up around here. Few and far between. That'll last into about dinner time, early evening, and then those will be dying off. We will be doing it again tomorrow, though. There will be just a couple of more of those showers. It looks very encouraging. Again, they're going to be few and far between at best. Temperatures are still going to be really hot tomorrow. Then we'll start to see just a slight, slight, slightly lower temperatures going in toward the end of the week as well as the weekend. 98 at noon, partly cloudy skies. High today, 104, mostly sunny. One or two of those stray showers out there. Of course, the excessive heat warnings, the purple shaded area, uh, which includes San Antonio, the surrounding counties, I-35 corridor going out 10, and then the heat advisory, the rest of the area, up until 7 o'clock tonight. Again, those heat index readings are going to be, especially down to the south, upwards of uh, 110 and higher than that. Tomorrow, 103. Yeah, still just ridiculously hot. And then slightly lower temperatures, averaging about 100 going through Thursday. It's funny to say that 100 is going to be a little more comfortable. Well, it says a lot about how bad it's been when yeah. we're cool with 99. Yeah. 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 And one or two of those stray showers in the afternoon. So still well above normal. Yeah, okay. not good. We'll power through until next week and keep our fingers crossed. Hopefully. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. 650, 80 degrees. And the month of July has been named by officials as Purposeful Parenting Month. But what exactly does that mean? Tomorrow on GMSA, how your family can benefit. Let's go outside with Live Cam. Thanks for starting your day with us here on KSAT 12 and GMSA. Beautiful look at your early morning sunrise. We'll be back. is behind bars this morning after she allegedly threatened to shoot up a school in Live Oak earlier this summer. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. This all stemmed from a phone call she made to the principal of Live Oak Learning Center on his cell phone, 28-year-old Ariana Brown. Police say the evening of June 8th, the principal of Live Oak Learning Center received a phone call from a blocked number. He told police a woman's voice told him she and others were going to go to the school the next day to beat someone up. 
The police affidavit says she allegedly said if that person was not at the school, that they would shoot the school up. The principal called the police. The next day, there was a police presence at the school. Live Oak police investigating the case were able to work with cell phone carrier companies to track down the blocked number and linked it to Brown and found her address. She was arrested earlier this summer and is now facing a felony charge of a terroristic threat. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Coming up today on GMS 89 with prices going up, getting ready for a new school year will be expensive. This morning, Tiffany Huetas is going to tell us how we can help local teachers restock their classrooms ahead of the upcoming school year. And meteorologist Justin Horn is going to be talking more about the latest episode of KSAT Explains that aired yesterday about exactly what is in the water of the San Antonio River. Those stories and more today on GMSA at 9. Let's check traffic at 5 till 7. Here's Stephen. A lot of those problems we mentioned earlier have already resolved, but we are seeing a lot more folks out there as we are starting to see the morning really picking up and people getting out there. So make sure you drive safe. Keep, them, keep a look out here. 410 northbound right there at Old Pearsall Road near the southwest side of San Antonio. We have detected a crash, seen some buildup, but right now our map isn't really picking it up just yet. So we'll call our friends at TransGuide a little bit later to see if we can get a view of the area. But right now, let's go ahead and give you a view of the actual air. Actually, we're going to jump over here. Forgot about this crash. Don't want to forget for I-35 northbound at Salms Road. Looks like this is cleared out. We saw some issues in the northbound lanes due to this issue uh, incident, but it's not causing problems anymore. Wide look at the map really just shows a lot of stalls remain in the area, so make sure you check your vehicles before you get out on the roadway, Mike. Thank you, sir. We've been uh, watching that little bit of rain off to the east this morning, and now a couple of more uh, spots have started to show up on radar right here on the east side of San Antonio, up there around Canyon Lake. Everything is kind of uh, drifting now off to the west, so not a drought breaker, but uh, hey, it is encouraging to see a little bit of this light rain, although this morning all it's going to do is make the roads kind of damp. 104 for a high temperature today, and of course we do have the excessive heat warnings in effect till 7 o'clock tonight. Thank you, Mike. All right, stay cool, guys, and be safe. We'll see you back here at 9. Good Morning America is next.